This little new box is a new objective lens for my Sharpstar 61 EDPH2 telescope. Um, I had noticed in a previous video, which I linked to above, that it had a lot of chromatic aberration. This little thing here. And I want to make sure that I can fix this. And, uh, oops, loose hood. Uh, based on the um, uh, feedback from some of my subscribers who mentioned that they had received a new objective lens from Sharpstar that fixed the issue, uh, I decided to contact Sharpstar um, on their Facebook page. They immediately answered me and they sent me this new uh, objective lens. For me, it was a free, of of, free of charge. Was it because I'm a YouTuber? I have no idea. Um, but I know that they have provided uh, a replacement objective lenses for other people than me. Uh, my guess is that you would need to have um, a very definite chromatic aberration on your telescope and be able to prove it before they're going to send something like this to you. Uh, I haven't looked at uh, the objective lens, so I really hope it's actually inside. Uh, I do know that on this uh, little telescope here, gee, uh, you can actually unscrew the uh, top part with the lens simply enough uh, manually and it's uh, actually surprisingly easy. And I'm just left with really the part that contains the objective lens. Okay, so now that I have my um, objective lens part removed, I can easily, and I think I could have done without removing it, but I think it's easier that way, I can hold on the red retaining ring and unscrew uh, the hood. And by the way, I'm making this up as I go because I've actually never done this before. Okay, so now I've removed the objective lens and we are left with uh, the, uh, the actual objective lens here for the uh, sharp star. Um, and I think we can just unscrew it. Yes, we can. Magic. And here we are. So I guess this is the part that I need to remove <laughs> really effectively. When you're buying a refractor, you're just buying this. <laughs> And then the rest is like bonus added uh, mechanical stuff uh, on top. Okay, let's now have a look at the new objective lens. And here is the lens. Here it is. Oh, I like the feel of this paper. It's like paper slash plastic. And I'm going to stop talking so much once I unwrap it. Here's my new lens. Um, you can see it doesn't have the actual um, markings from the old lens, like the APO, uh, three element, etc. Uh, so I think I'll be able to remove it from the old one and add it to this one. And, and this part is the only part that's actually uh, threaded here. So I know I need to thread it into the uh, telescope objective there. And that's shockingly easy. Okay, now I want to put back uh, the, the actual ring, like with, with the markings. So I think I can remove it from the old lens. So this is the old lens. Oh yeah, okay, it's very easy. I can simply rotate it to remove that little ring with the actual markings. That's pretty cool. And I can add it to my new lens. There, as good as new. Now let me add the hood, which is simply a matter of screwing it in. And now I can finally screw everything back into the actual telescope. And that's it for the installation. This was actually shockingly easy. I, I was expecting it to be much more difficult, but at least now it's on camera. And if you get any time a replacement lens, well, you'll know what to, uh, what to do to replace it. So now I need to actually test this new replacement lens and I will do that the next time I have some good weather, which will be uh, within this video through the magic of editing. So see you then.
we're now back on the balcony it's actually the day after and we're getting great weather we're really getting into winter mood here in Tokyo which means that we get uh, more often clear nights which is great but we also get a lot of wind and horrible horrible seeing which is less great and I have the telescope uh, set up here I've reconnected everything and I've put in the filter drawer at the bottom here the uh, luminance filter uh, UV IR cut filter from SV Boni. I am going to take a picture of the Triangulum Galaxy just like last time so I want to make sure what happens when I actually stack a, a good amount of subs and see what we get and it is actually the full moon I can see the full moon like grinning at me evilly back there glaring and uh, yeah so it's not gonna be the it's not gonna be yeah, like even in Tokyo it does make a difference so it's we're not gonna get a masterpiece but we'll be able to see whether the new objective is helping if I still see issues I'll be changing the filter here for an L Pro and uh, we'll do a second run but anyway um, I'll get uh, started on uh, setting this up we'll let this uh, little ASI Air Plus uh, do its magic and uh, I'll see you uh, hopefully tomorrow to look at uh, the results of course before tomorrow if you like this video this kind of video uh, feel free to go down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel welcome in this case click that notification bu button leave a comment leave a like and if you're thinking about spending some money on astrophotography equipment feel free to use some affiliate links I have in the description for OPT High Point Scientific or Amazon whichever works for you okay and we are here the following day to see what results we're getting from our imaging session with the new objective unfortunately there was a change of plans uh, because as I started taking pictures of the Triangulum Galaxy I noticed that the moonlight was just too much that there was like half the, fl the frame was kind of like getting washed out in moonlight yeah the, the, the full moon was just too close to the target which means that it diminished the contrast that I had available to view like very well chromatic aberrations so what I did instead is that I pointed uh, the telescope to the Veil Nebula which has a very nice rich star field and I took um, around two hours of data on that before the clouds rolled in. Now the winds were brutal um, and like pretty much every single frame had star trailing because of the wind even though I was taking 30 second exposures. So that's a bit of a bummer but it should still give us a good idea of uh, whether we're seeing the same level of chromatic aberration as I did with the old objective. Okay, so as a reminder, here is what we were seeing uh, with the old uh, objective. Um, and you could see like those, those halos around those bright stars and even the, the lesser, <laughs> lesser stars uh, would have like this blue or like magenta halo around them that, that I found absolutely impossible to process. And unfortunately, I do not have the single frames anymore. And this is because I was just so frustrated with this capture where I spent 15 hours on this target to have a result that was just difficult to work with. Uh, I should not have deleted those subframes, but uh, yeah, I did. So I do not have any subframe to show anymore. I do remember that on the subframes, the chromatic aberration was much harder to see than on the uh, stacked frames. But we can really see it clearly, like really difficult to deal with, with uh, the old objective. Now let's have a look at the new objective. And first, now I do have like single frames. Uh, so just looking at a single frame, we can see that things are not looking too bad at first glance. I mean, there's a bit of a blue kind of like outline to this star, for instance. Uh, but I don't see too much blue around this star, a bit of a yellow halo. But, you know, nothing really, you know, strikes me as it's going to be a huge problem. Okay, so let's have a look now at the stacked result. And uh, this particular stack, by the way, is uh, of 1,500 frames for like, I think it was 14 hours of data. Uh, but I do remember like stacking after a single night where I had only like maybe three hours of useful data and seeing those halos and 
thinking like it's gonna be fine I can deal with it in processing so we should still be able to see those problems with the new objective with just the 2R stack so let's have a look at the actual stack data and uh, this is it and at first glance it looks much much better so towards the uh, center of the frame like I don't see any obvious halos uh, the big stars might have a bit of like you can see on like blue tinge here and there um, we can see a bit of a halo around this one but some of the yellowish star of the same like um, intensity light intensity there the, the, there's no like very definite blue magenta halo that we were seeing on the previous image but right now we're looking at the image um, like just with a stretch it's much better easier to see those halos after we do a masked stretch that really conserves the uh, star colors so uh, let's do that okay and here I am after a masked uh, stretch and we can see uh, <laughs> we can actually see the veil nebula this is without light pollution's filter this is which just the luminance filter from SV Boney so yeah and let's look at this very bright star so again like we can see the traces of blue here there's a bit of like a, almost a yellowish halo um, around it and the the other bright stars in the area they might have like a very slight halo um, and this one maybe a halo towards like the, the bottom left part of the star but this looks manageable this is what I would expect from a telescope at that price point um, at, a, at such a fast focal ratio um, and yeah we do see halos here as well but it looks nowhere near as bad as you know what we had before and if I go to that uh, super bright star on the top, top left here it is uh, we can see the halos by the way starting to um, we're towards the, more the corner of the frame we can see that the, the halo now is more towards the edge of the frame and the inner so there's like this this shift in colors which makes sense so again that's more what of what I expect for this kind of optic um, at this price range and this does not bother me and this is not going to impede my processing um, which is great and yeah this this looks fine it's not perfect it's not a Takahashi telescope it's not uh, even a, like a Vixen a well corrected refractor uh, but this I think is perfectly acceptable it's in line with the spot diagrams that I saw for the telescope and this is what I was expecting so I am very happy to have gotten this new objective lens um, the installation was easy I didn't have to realign anything it seems to be working decently well um, yeah this is good I now am happy with my uh, sharp star 61 ed ph2 it's not perfect it's not a tack don't expect a takahashi telescope uh, but for the price range perfectly decent um, and i think it is a vast improvement over those stars here let me just increase the contrast just so that i am sure so i'm gonna open a preview nope wrong image I'm gonna open a preview there we're gonna like increase the uh, contrast to really like it's gonna look terrible and while I'm at it I'm also going to increase the set oh this is horrible saturation uh, and we're gonna apply that to the image uh, uh, it, it, it hurts me and yeah uh, it doesn't reveal those huge halos yes there are smaller halos there but that's perfectly manageable and obviously I would never push like the saturation like crazy on an image like that uh, it's what I expect like you know left hand side blue halo right hand side uh, yellow it's, it's fine um, and that's pretty much it that's like I, I am going to do further testing but now I know that when the full moon kind of calms down <laughs> I will be able to take pictures of the triangulum, triangulum galaxy and this time I will not be wasting my um, imaging time which uh, which is great so I'm very happy of uh, how Sharpstar handled this issue now Sharpstar is aware that I am a youtuber so it is possible that I got special treatment however the reason that I contacted them in the first place was because others 
like normal people and not normal. Uh, normal people had asked about this huge chromatic aberration that they were thing, seeing and Sharpstar had sent them new objective lenses. I know of two subscribers who told me about that and it's thanks to them that I contacted Sharpstar to get that uh, replacement objective lens. So they've done it in the past. However, my guess is that if you see like mild chromatic aberration like we see here, and which I think is perfectly within specs and acceptable, they won't send you a new objective, it wouldn't you know, help anything. However, if you see something like this hardware here, well, <laughs> then you may want to uh, contact Sharpstar and tell them about, them about that and send them those images so they can double check that sending you a new objective would work. In my case, uh, the objective was sent to me at no charge, I do not know whether, you know, what the policy will be for other people. So um, please check on your own, discuss with Sharpstar if you have the same issue that I do. If you have a radiant telescope, by the way, I don't think Sharpstar will do anything because it's, um, uh, it's a different company taking care of that. So we'll need to uh, talk with OPT um, about that. But for the Sharpstar thing, if you see appalling results, definitely contact them. And that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. I wanted to, uh, to release that fairly quickly to show you uh, how things are going with the new objective lens now that I have some results. I'll be, uh, if I do find further issues, obviously I'll do some updates, but right now I am satisfied and I am very happy with how Sharpstar handled things for me. So, great. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. If you're new to the channel, you're into astrophotography, astronomy, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, click that bell icon. I promise you won't regret it. While you're there, uh, please leave a comment with your thoughts about this and a like or dislike to the video just to tell uh, the YouTube algorithm that uh, people are reacting to this and it might be interesting to others as well. And uh, Again, thank you so much for watching. As always, one of you can, don't forget to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.